Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, we are going to be working these perfect, 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 perfect skit, uh, skitchen, <laughs> kitchen scrubbies. Now, I have a crocheted version of these, and I like my crocheted version. It, there's nothing wrong with it, but wow, are excuse me, are these so much prettier and cleaner, cleaner meaning um, your stitches are nice and uniform. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I love these loom knitted ones. These are perfect. And they're so, I, I, I just, I really think these would sell great at a, uh, a craft fair or, you know, what have you. But also in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I make these little face scrubbies. So you just take your hand and put your hand in there. Like that. Now you can use it on your face, your body. This basically came out of what is left of the tool that we're going to use for the kitchen scrubbies. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to waste the tool that was left on my my spools. So I thought, well, I can make these little face scrubbies and that's perfect. So you get two tutorials in one today. Your kitchen and your face scrubbies. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about the tool first. I got my tool from Hobby Lobby. All right, and they come in little spools like this. Now, this th there's no difference in the amount that you get or what the tool is made out of. These are both 25 yards, both 100% polyester. They are six inches. from top to bottom and 25 yards. The only difference is this one is made in Mexico and it's $3.99. See that? This one is made in China and it's $2.99. For this specific pattern, for this tutorial today, do not buy the Mexico one. Only because it is so... I, I, I wish I had the perfect word to explain to you guys. The, it is rough. It is really, really rough. And it's, it's, I, I guess you could say thicker. It's, it's, it tends to be pretty thick and it just, it's rough. It's not easy to work with on these looms and it doesn't make a good, um, scrubby. It, you just can't work with it. So definitely pay attention to what you're grabbing at Hobby Lobby and get the one from China. It's perfect for these. All right. So you got your $2.99 uh, spool, I'll say, of tool from Hobby Lobby. Now, like I said, remember this is 25 yards and it's six inches. So a six inch spool of made in China, I, I, I'm sure you could probably find it somewhere else this width, this size. Um, and I'm, I would assume that if made in China is probably going to be the same as this too. I would just steer clear of anything made in Mexico because uh, holy cow, does that hurt your hands and it makes a horrible face scrubby. <laughs> so don't get that. All right. So then you're going to need a loom. Now this is a 24 peg loom. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description box so you guys can pick you up one if you want. This is from, um, Amazon. Now I have others that I have gotten. I do want to say I recommend not using, I don't have one next to me. Hold on just a second. Okay. I recommend not using a loom that has pegs like this. These are a beast to get your tool over the top of. Definitely, definitely get this one that has the uh, flat tops. It's this, it is a cheap little thing and it does come with the little, not this exact one, but it comes with a little pick that you're going to need. Um, so, I mean, that's your other supply is your pick, <laughs> but definitely pick up one of these looms or if you can find one at a rummage sale right now, it'd probably be the perfect time. People are having rummage sales all over the place, but you're, so you're going to need a 24 peg loom. You're going to need your hook with it. You're going to need your spool. And then you're going to need 
a needle. Now, you don't have to have this specific needle, although I highly, highly recommend these needles. I'll put a link in the description box for you. These needles come in handy all the time. I love these. But it has a slight bent tip at the top. You see that? And what that does, that makes it perfect to get it into the, the groove of your peg and then it helps with drawstringing or help, helps with the drawstring cast off on these looms. But also it works good with weaving in the ends of this tool. So get you a needle and then get you a little notepad and a piece of paper so you can keep track of your round for ugh, your... Um, your scrubbies. Okay, what else do I need to tell you? Okay, so at the end of your your kitchen scrubby, in the tutorial, I tell you guys, you know, you've worked so many rounds, yada yada, and then you're gonna take your you're gonna take your working tool and you're gonna bring it around your loom and you're gonna go to your anchor peg and then you're gonna go past the anchor peg all the way around, right there. If you want to make the face scrubby as well as the kitchen scrubby, you don't need to go this far. You can come right up to here and stop and, ha well, a little bit past that, maybe right in here, and have plenty of tool to cast off, okay? So if you are choosing to do both scrubbies, you don't have to go halfway around your sp or your loom again, okay? Um, I do mention that in the tutorial, but I mention it after we've already done it, which I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but anyway, all right, so get your supplies together and we will make these awesome kitchen scrubbies and then we'll make some face scrubbies. Don't these make just cute little gifts? You can put your hand in there like that. And the, 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 the tool from China is so super soft for your face. It's, it's just, it's just, um, scrubby enough, I'll say, for your face and, like, this doesn't hurt. So, I mean, it's perfect for your face, but yet it's just, just, um, scrubby enough to want to be perfect for your dishes, too. Now, this Mexico one, this will take your flesh off. Holy cow. I would, like, yeah, listen. Can you guys tell the difference? Like this, this is, this will, this will take rust off of a pan. <laughs> okay, I'm done yakking, guys. Get your supplies together and let's get started. Hey guys, I wanted to jump on here real quick before we get started. Um, a little trick I've learned working so many of these scrubbies. If you take a wash rag, I'm going to take it like this, fold it, and I'm going to fold it in half. If you take your tool... Hold it inside that wash rag and then pull that tool through the wash rag. What that does is it loosens up that, um, makes the, basically how to explain it is it makes the tool a little bit more manageable and you can get a little more length out of, uh, your spool. Um, I will say one color, uh, maroon. I don't know what happened, but it turned that tool to where it just like, it snapped. <laughs> that, that, that color of tool is the only color I've had problems with. Okay, so that's all I wanted to tell you guys. Run your tool through a wash rag and don't do it through your hand because it will burn you and it'll burn your clothes. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, here, you can see where I ran it through my shirt. See where it burnt my shirt? <laughs> it's a pajama shirt. It'll be all right. Okay, so do that as you're working your working your scrubbies and it's going to help so much. All right, so back to the, back to the tutorial. Okay, so to get started with our scrubby... We are going to, going to get our tool and do a little bit of it. All right, we are going to get a slip knot on the end of our tool right here. Okay, so just like you would with yarn, we're going to get a little slip knot, and then we're going to put that on our anchor peg tighten it down and then we're going to take this tail and run it right between the first and the 24th peg okay so if your anchor peg 
Okay, so if your anchor peg is right in front of your peg, consider the peg that it's in front of the 24th, and then the one to the right of it is your number one peg, okay? So if your anchor peg's right in front of a peg, that's peg 24, and then peg 21. So if your peg is between pegs, then this on your left is 24, and on your right is 20 is uh, one, all right? So we got a slip knot on our anchor peg. Now take that tail between peg one and 24, and then just hold that out of the way, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna weave in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way around, okay? I got an itch. All right, so we're gonna go between one and 24, come behind one, between one and two, two and three, and then this is what we're gonna do. Weave it all the way around. You can let go of your tail just like this and then kind of scrunch it to the bottom of the pegs and back and forth back and forth get that tail out of the way all the way around and your 24th peg should have the tool coming in front of it and then you're going to go right back behind peg one. All right. So peg one has nothing on it. Right. All right. So that is our drawstring cat. Well, the beginning of our drawstring cast on. So what I'm going to do now is just, I'm just going to go through here and uh, squish the tool to the bottom of the pegs. Okay. Okay. So to finish the drawstring cast on, we are going to come across a few pegs. Just lay the tool right across the pegs, just like this. And all I'm gonna do is hold this with my other hand, just hold the tool there. And then we're gonna bring only the pegs that have two strands on it, the bottom over the top. So we should have two, one, two, one, two. So meaning uh, two strands of tool, one strand, two strands of tool, one strand, all right? So I'm gonna bring that bottom over the top. Skip the next, because it only has one. Bring the bottom over the top. Skip the next, go to the next, bring the bottom over the top. Now we're gonna bring the, our working yarn back to the front and we can scoop the ones we've done down a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is lay it across a few more, bring it between some pegs and hold it with my other hand. And now we're gonna bring the bottom over the top, bottom, over the top, bottom, over the top. Okay. And now I'm going to slide those to the bottom of my pegs. And remember our work always comes to the, uh, to the front. So we pull it back to the front, which on this one, it's already there. And then we lay it on cross, uh, lay it on top of a few more. And I'm going to bring it through and then just hold it with my other hand. And now, so this one right here, we've only got one. So we skip, go to the next one that has two. Bring the bottom over the top. Skip. Bottom over the top. Bottom over the top. And this last one right here. Bottom. Oops, it's easy. Bottom over the top. Dang it. <laughs> there. Let's try this again here. Bottom over the top. Skip the next. Bottom over the top. Bring it back to the front. We're back to our anchor peg. So I'm just going to go right between 1 and 24, hold it. This one only has one, so come to that next and bring it right over. Okay, so that is our drawstring cast on. So I'm just going to push this to the bottom. And now we are going to start e-wrapping. All right, so we have our work between peg 1 and peg 24. And to e-wrap, what we're going to do is our work is coming to the back, right? So we're going to e-wrap 1 to 24, 1 to 24. Just keep e-wrapping around. Well, what we do is we take our tool and we go 
past peg one and then come around it just like that go past peg two come back around it go past peg three come back around it past peg four come back around it and now um i did a tutorial that it's actually the exact same pattern and that is for uh these little kitchen scrubbies but using cotton yarn and scrubby yarn and in that video i explained the reason well what I think the reason these are called E-wraps is because you're making little cursive E's around the pegs. So if you look, you go past the peg, come back and around. Past the peg, back and around. And we do that so far. And I and then you know, E-wrap that peg, and then I'm gonna stop and bring my working tool to my other hand, and then I'm going to bring the like row uh peg number one we only have one strand on it we only have one strand of tool but the other ones are going to have two which that's perfectly fine that's what we want so peg one we don't work with that right now but peg two bring the bottom over the top bottom over the top and we do that All the way to that last one that we e-wrapped and now we come back and just continue e-wrapping go past the peg get my tool out of the way go past the peg and then go come back around past it come back around and with this hand right here all I'm doing is just kind of holding my tool where I want it to go okay so e-wrap a few And then I'm going to stop and then just put the tool in my other hand so I can come back and bring the bottom over the top. Oop. Sometimes you might catch the tool of that top loop but that's okay so I'm gonna just slide them all down and then ear up remember go past the peg come between and around past it come around okay so I just did peg 24 because here's my anchor peg so I'm gonna stop hold my tool with my other hand bring the bottom over the top Okay, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to make a tally because that was our first row round of E-Wrap. And we need a total of 14. Slide your E-Wraps down after you work them. So that was row one, round one. So I'm just going to continue doing. Now round one, or round two, we finally get two loops on peg one, okay? Other than that, it's the exact same thing. E-Wrap a few. I'm going to stop, bring my tool to my other hand so I can hold it, bring my work back around, separate that a little bit better, all right, go ahead and slide these down, and then e-wrap, and keep going tools rolling all over oh okay it's fine <laughs> it's set there okay ear up ear up a few more and then I'm just gonna bring it to my other hand and work the bottom over the top I'm gonna go a little bit faster now Continue e wrapping. Oh, I just passed the anchor peg, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. E wrap 
or I mean work these few pegs. Go ahead and work that number one. Now I'm going to stop and make my tally because I just finished row two. All right, so that's all you're going to repeat. Let me get my tool out. You're going to repeat that and repeat that around until you have 14 rounds, okay? You see my little tally marks. <laughs> all right, now what we're going to do is we are going to cast off. We're going to draw string cast off our 14 rounds, okay? And I went ahead and took my slip knot off my anchor peg. And I would suggest like where you are now with this one, you can go ahead and take it off. Just pick it off there and pull it out and continue working. If you don't take that off, what, what's going to happen is your 14 rounds are going to be bunched up to that anchor peg. And that's all that happens. And you just pop it off there. Okay, so to finish our kitchen scrubby you're going to take your tool and uh, keep your anchor peg face to you wrap around to your anchor peg and then go around about halfway and then cut that tool off okay and then we are going to take this piece of tool and we're going to thread it on this needle now this needle is absolutely perfect to use with this this tool and these looms um Oh, excuse me. I'm going to link the needle that I got. I got these off Amazon. I'm going to link them in the description box as, as well as the loom too. Okay. Cause this loom is perfect. All right. So here's a perfect example of the loom. I was talking about where your anchor peg is right in front of your last peg. So I e-wrapped this peg, right? So I'm going to go right to peg one and I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. And run my tail through there just like that now I'm gonna go to peg two bottom to the top and run that through there and that's all I'm gonna do is repeat this all the way around Okay, so I did that all the way around and I'm back to my anchor peg. So I'm going to go ahead and run that through number one, or I'm sorry, through uh, round 24. And then I'm going to go through round uh, peg one again. And that's it. And now we are just going to pull all of these off of the pegs. And they're going to be a little tight, but once you get the first couple ones off... They, it loosens right up and you can pop them off. Okay, I was leaving my needle on here. Okay, so you can set your loom and your hook to the side. And here is our scrubby. I'm just gonna give it a little tug like that. Now the end that we just uh, uh, cast it off, I'm gonna leave my hook or my needle on the tail, okay? So the end that we started with, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. And pull it nice and tight and then I'm gonna run it through the center I should have done that before I pulled it too tight just gonna run that up the center and then bring that through and now should be able to pull it almost closed it's not gonna go fully closed but that's okay because we are going to take our needle Get that tail that we just pulled through there, get that on our needle, and we're just going to go back and forth, <clears throat> excuse me, back and forth across this hole. All we're doing is just sewing it shut. All 
and all uh, basically I'm just getting my needle into loops from the uh, beginning that I can see see and that's what it's gonna look like okay it now that doesn't have to be perfect I mean it may take a couple of times before you can actually get a hold of something that's gonna pull it shut but you'll you'll see if uh, it's not a perfect science just because I mean it's knitting it's kind of hard to see okay so now we're to the top we're gonna pull that our other tail I mean is what I'm pulling on here I'm gonna pull that kind of tight kind of shut I'm sorry kind of shut not fully you know I can still get my finger in there but what we're gonna do now is just kind of bring your in here and your in here together and then give these outsides a tug and that's gonna cause our scrubby to start laying flat like that I'm going to go ahead and find my tail I need now I'm gonna pull that tight and pull it shut just like that so you can see this one fully well I mean this one pretty much fully closes so now I'm going to put my tail back or my needle back on that tail okay and you can see where my this tail is coming from right it's coming from like it went this direction so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to continue my tail around that direction trying my best to get into strands if I miss them that's it's fine um it'll close up pretty good itself I can feel it just slid a little bit farther closed now I'm just gonna run through some more of these all right I am going to call that good so I'm gonna take my two tails and I'm gonna tie them in a knot I'm going to pull tight and you can see it closes up that hole. There. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these tails, doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to get that on my needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a stitch along the outside. And all that's going to do is just keep the scrubby nice and flat. It'll keep it from puffing back out. So I'm going to take the needle or the tail that I have on my needle. And I'm going to run it through that middle, which is going to be pretty tight. And then I'm going to bring it, I'm bringing it in and coming out that side the best I can. There we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do, get my chair adjusted. So you can see where I'm, I came out, I came right above that, above this bar, okay? So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna come over this bar and then, so I'm working in this, in this uh, space between the stitches, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to come out the space between the next stitches. So I want to catch this bar right there and then I'm going to come out this side and I'm under that bar. If you can go under or over, it doesn't matter which, just as long as you can catch that bar. So now I'm going to go back in, but I'm going to go over that bar and then come out this side under the bar. Now this time I'm going to go to the next bar, which is down here. See that bar right there? I'm going to come down to that and I worked right through here. So now I'm going to come out on this side and I'm going to go, I'm going to go under that bar. So now I'm going to go over that bar and then I'm going to come out on this side. You have to switch up going under and over that bar because if you continually go over, you're eventually going to get to the top of the scrubby. So, if, you know, if you work one or two under, work one or two over, one or two under, one or two over. That'll keep you consistently along the edge. 
Okay, so I just came out here, so I'm going to go over this one and come out this side. I'm going to go over. Oopsie daisy. Come out. Over. Under. And it, to be honest, this part isn't 100% necessary. Um, because you did sew your two tail, or I'm sorry, you tied your two tails in a knot in the center. This is just going to help keep it nice and prettier, I guess. Because, you know, once you use it so many times and you, like, whenever, these, these do get nasty, obviously. I mean, you're already doing dishes with them and they're going to get food on them and, um, whatnot. So, sorry, it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. So, I run these through the washer and the dryer and they come out perfect, just the way I made them. And I think one thing that helps with that is running this little stitch along this edge. And you can see where we've done it and where we haven't. You see where it's nice and flat right there, and then right here it isn't. So that's a good way to see where you've started, where you need to stop. So I'm just about back to the beginning. Okay, so I am back to the beginning. So I'm going to come out. I'm going to come out on the same end that has uh, my other tail, okay? So now I'm between this little bar, right? Can you see the bar that's above where my tail is coming out? I'm going to go back in and come under that tail. And then it's gonna, that's going to leave me a loop. Don't close up that loop. And I'm going to run my needle through that. And then pull it tight. And all that's going to do is knot off my, my uh, tool. So now I'm going to run my needle inside and come out anywhere. What are you doing, Churchy? Dang cat. All right. Now we just cut that tail and let that go back inside our scrubby. And we do the same thing with the other tail. Run it through the scrubby, cut it, and then let your tail go back into the scrubby. I'm just going to go right in. Come out wherever I can get it. My needle. Pull on it a little. Cut, and it'll snap right back inside. And there is our kitchen scrubby. I think these are so much prettier than the crocheted ones. I I love these. I think these would sell big time at um, craft fairs. Okay, so now that is the end of your kitchen scrubby. So after you worked 14 rounds, and like I said at the beginning, when you want to make the face scrubby with what is left of your... Um, what is left of your tool after you make your kitchen scrubby. The only thing is when you're getting ready to cut, uh, when you're getting ready to, um, you know, you've worked your, your 14 rounds of your e-wrap and then you get, you take your tail and you wrap it around, only wrap it just a little past that anchor peg. Don't go a whole nother, you know, a long way around and cut it. Just go a little past that anchor peg and then cut. Okay. And then do the exact same thing you just did. Um, that's the only difference. Because that's going to give you a little more tool left on your on your, um, on your your spool to make the little face scrubby. 
So to make the face scrubby, you're going to do the exact same thing that you just did for the kitchen scrubby. Okay. You're going to get your slip knot on your anchor peg, run that between pegs one and 24. You're going to zigzag in and out of your pegs, get back to the beginning and then lay your, lay your tool on top around and then only the pegs that have two, because remember one peg won't, two peg will, one peg won't, two peg will. Bring the bottom over the top, bottom over the top, bottom over the top. Get back to the beginning and then e-wrap. And in, for the kitchen scrubby, you e-wrap for 14 rounds. You should have enough tool left to be able to do five, or I'm sorry, not five, <laughs> seven seven rounds, seven or eight, should be somewhere between seven and eight rounds of e-wrap. So once you get so far, like it, let's say you did round six, take your, take your tool and wrap it around and see, okay, do you have enough to do another round? So that'd be, you know, you just did round six of e-wrap, take your tool, wrap it around, then go past that anchor peg a little bit like that. And that's enough enough tool to do another round. So you can go ahead and do round seven. Do your round seven, take your tool, run it back around. Can you make it a tad bit past that anchor peg? That's perfect. You can do a uh, round seven. And after that, you probably aren't going to have enough tool to do uh, an eighth round, but you need at least seven rounds, enough tool to do seven rounds. Okay. So you did your seven rounds and you're right up to where I am. So now you just take your tool and run it around and you should have enough to go a little past that anchor peg left on your spool. Um, so for, to make your face scrubby. So now we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the kitchen scrubby. We are going to do the drawstring cast off. We're going to get that tail that just came off our spool get that on our needle. And actually, uh, the last round you work doesn't actually have to be pushed to the bottom of your, of your pegs, but we're just going to catch, go from the bottom up of the first, the first uh, peg. And we're going to just do that again. Like we did for the kitchen scrubby. We're going to repeat that all the way around. So in the beginning, when I had said, um, you know, the difference between these tools from Hobby Lobby is one is made in Mexico and one is made in China. And the one made in Mexico is $3.99 and the one made in China is $2.99. Uh, this is the one made in Mexico and the tool is so much, what's the, I want to say, um, thicker. Uh, this, it, it makes it harder on to work on a loom. So like I said, definitely, definitely make sure you get the one from China. It's a little easier to work on this loom. Now crocheting with it, it's exactly the same. There's no big difference. And after you've, you know, you run this through the loom so many times, see how, uh, the, the tool gets because you just constantly running it through there. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Ah, see how tight that is? <laughs> Just about done. Oh, pop that right off there. Just about there. Oh, this is so tough. Okay, here is the last peg. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and go under peg one again. And that's all I got left. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so now I'm just going to start taking these off my off my pegs, which I'm sure is going to be pretty tough. And 
and it is holy cow that first one okay now i got it that first one was tough It's just the, the tool from Mexico does not want to be worked with, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Sorry if it doesn't. I wonder, like, just looking at it through my camera, you can kind of tell there's a big difference. Like, this is from China. See how Mexico is, is a lot more uh, uh, glittery? I didn't notice that. Okay, just about done. All right, last one. Okay, now we are off the peg or the loom. So you can set that to the side. And now, just like with the other, with the kitchen scrubby. I'm going to work with the, not the one that we just, um, draw string cast off, not that one, but the other end, I'm going to go ahead and pull that tight. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and run it through the middle, just like we did before and pull it tight. And I think this one is not going to be as pretty as the ones that are made with the tool from China. But that's okay. Ugh. All right, so that's what I've, about as tight as I can get it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this tail. Get that on my needle. And I'm coming out from here, so I'm just going to go straight across and I'm going to catch catch the strand and pull now I'm here so I'm gonna come here just I'm just gonna keep coming straight across from where I end up because once I pull it tight it is going to um, move where I'm at uh, get that tail out of there pull that tight all right so I'm gonna go right over here Okay, I'm going to go one more time right over here. All right, so that sewed up that end. So now this end, get it to flip this way. We can go ahead and pull this tight and this one gives us the pretty closed it, uh, closed other end. And we're going to have to adjust it out a little. All right. So now I'm going to take my two ends. I'm going to go ahead and just tie them in a knot like we did with the kitchen scrubby. Just pull that as tight as I can get it. Knot it again. So this one, it, you can, I mean, you can clearly see didn't fully go closed. But the ones that I've made from... Um, from with the tool from China, you can see it's it's almost completely closed. Well, look at my orange one, it, and this is so much softer than this one. So definitely try to steer clear of the Mexico tool. Sorry, I wish I would have thought of that before I started this tutorial. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to take the uh, the tail that's on our needle and we're gonna bring it. We're going to bring it straight in and out the side. So I'm just going to go right in there and go out along the edge. I'm going to try not to go through the tool. There, right like that. Right straight through there. And I'm going to do the other, end, other tail. And I'm going to bring it right straight across, evenly across that first tail. I'm going to bring it right out on this side. So 
So we'll kind of line that up a little bit. And there we go. It's right on each side. And now all I'm going to do is bring these two tails to the top and over the middle. And I'm just going to tie it in a bow. And I'm going to do the best I can to, to try to stay center. Having another hand right now would be really helpful. But I'm going to come up about that far off the top. And I'm going to tie that in a bow. Pull it tight. Make sure my bow ears are relatively the same height. Bring my ends like that. And then I'm just going to eyeball it and cut. So then you just run your hand through there and wash your face or your body like that. Now, like I said, I want to apologize. I should never have used the Mexico tool to make this because <laughs> this is going to be rough on your face. These, super soft. Perfect for your face and for your kitchen. <laughs> okay, guys. So there is your face scrubby. There is your kitchen scrubby. I hope you guys enjoyed my little tutorial here. Um, subscribe if you haven't because I've got way more tutorials coming. It's all in my brain. All I need are the hours in the day to get them from my hands to YouTube. To, then to you guys. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so, so very much for watching. You're the greatest. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed. And check out the description box where I have links to all kinds of tutorials or all links to all kinds of goodies for you guys down there. I've got my my uh, Facebook group, my Etsy shop, my Instagram, my Twitter, um, any kind of social media that you uh, prefer to use. And that's it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.